have that same energy towards the vision, a lot of things will start coming to pass. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Let me give you this. Go to um, Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse number 19. All right, what does that say? Isaiah 1 and 19. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat. So if you if you're willing and obedient, so we need some folks that are willing to know what the vision is and be obedient to whatever the vision is saying. Y'all follow what I'm saying? And I think a lot of the reason why you know uh, a lot of the vision isn't coming to pass because a lot of people isn't really a part of what the vision is. And then a lot of y'all just don't know. And, you know, and to be honest, a lot of y'all probably don't really care because if you cared, you'd be like, hey, what, what's going on? What's the next move? What's the next step? Y'all follow what I'm saying? And the, let me tell you something. The re, anybody know what's the reason for a vision? Anybody know why we need a vision? Think. Say that one more time. People care. Yeah, the, not only people, but the church die off without a vision. If there's no vision for the ministry, every, if you don't have, uh, pay attention to your, 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 uh, your, your auxiliaries, people that's over the usher board, people that's over uh, uh, men's ministry, the women's ministry, the, the DM, whatever your specific auxiliary is, if you don't have no vision, that ministry going to die off. And it's going to be, you the president over that ministry, you can be the only person in there. You the only, you'll be the only usher on there, only usher person that's on that usher board if, if there's no vision. If you haven't dealt with the people that's in your auxiliary, if you haven't been talking to them and pushing them, say, hey, look, this is what the vision is. And if they don't even know what time it is or what the vision is, that thing going to slack off and die. Amen. Let me show you this. Go to the book of Acts. We need some folks that's going to be eager and push the vision. Amen. Some of y'all just, let me tell you something. Us just coming here us, us just coming here Acts 2 and 17. Us just coming here to the church, me preaching to y'all, we you know, praising God and all that stuff like that. That's not the entire, that's not the vision. It's not the vision. Amen. This is for us. The church is for the saints. But what do we have for the people that's in the world? What do we have for the sinners? We're, we're you know, when are we going to, you know, start pushing towards the vision of getting facilities for people out there? When are you going to start, you know, saying, hey, Pastor, is it all right if I go out there and do this to be able to draw this? Can I go out there? Some of y'all, when y'all first came. Everybody right now is in kind of chill, relaxed mode. Amen. I'll be honest with you. I think, I, I think um, when, when Corona starts coming in last year, I think it took the, the, the move, the evangelism, it took the drive for the ministry, everything started dying off. Corona came in and did, you know, just knocked off everybody. Nobody got that drive. Nobody have that, that push anymore to say, listen, you know, I'm going to do whatever it takes to make sure that whatever the vision is for the ministry, whatever the vision is for my specific auxiliary, whatever the vision is for the church, I, I want to see it come to pass. Listen, if you want to see something come to pass, you're excited about it. You're ready. You say, man, Pastor, you know, I, I can't wait till we do this. When, when can we do it? Pastor, am I allowed? Can I go out here and do this so we, it, it can contribute to the, uh, to the vision? Can I go out and do that so it can contribute? Where, where, where are y'all? When y'all going to come to me and ask me those questions? When y'all going to talk amongst yourselves and say, hey, you know what? Um, Pastor did say that, you know, we're going to have a kitchen to feed the homeless. Y'all think we could just go buy some pizza and start feeding homeless people now just to start the vision? Can, can we do something very small? Can we, you know, start, we're we, we going to eventually get a gym and all these different things like that, but can we start getting our name out there hosting basketball games? Can we start just so we could have our foot in the ground? When you, when you know that there's a vision, you know, when there's a vision, there are always, a, whether there's goals, whatever it is, there's always something called objectives. And the objectives, when you look at goals, now, I think I talked this to y'all a while ago. Goals must be smart, right? 
Yes? Yeah. All right. What does S stand for? All right. Y'all remember? Okay. Specific, measurable. It can be achievable or attainable, however you want to put it. All right. Realistic. It's a little different writing like this, so y'all bear with me. All right, and what's the last one? Time bound, or what did you say, time sensitive? Time bound, same thing, right? So when we're writing our specific, or our goals, smart goals, specific, measurable, attainable, or achievable, realistic, and time bound, when we write those things, in order to get whatever this goal is, we got to have an objective, right? So that is, what are we going to do to get to that? How could we start? Prime example, when I worked at a restaurant, when I worked at, um, I worked at Crystal's, right? We have our goal. So my goal for my shift was to be the fastest, right? So our drive through time was two minutes and 30 seconds. That was our goal, right? So we had area objectives, right? So, uh, so the grill out. His job was to dress, or have him crystals dress, within 60 seconds, right? And then the, the drive through person. Take order within seven seconds, right? These are objectives to reach this goal here. Everybody understand? So when we have, uh, we got this big, big, we got this huge vision, and I'm going to uh, get it made, and we're going to put it in there somewhere, uh, give you, you know, maybe get you something just to, maybe you can take a picture of it and put it in the background of your phone so you can, <laughs> so you can remember. Amen. So put it up somewhere so we can look at it and say, okay, all right, that's a good goal. All right, how can we do that? How can we find, you know, where, where are all the majority of men at right now, or black men at that? Where are they at? Jail, right? If we're trying to get some deliverance and all those different things like that, what do you think would be a, a good objective to get, uh, say we get 100 black men, what, what, what are we going to do? Prison ministry, right? So now, okay, if they serving three to five years or serving two years or whatever, and we're down there preaching Jesus to them, get them baptized in Jesus' name, when they come out of jail, where they going? Right here. So what, what, what won't happen is that they won't get right back into the system because the way the system is set up, you go to jail, you get out. If you don't go, if you don't go do something different, you'll go back to whatever got you in jail, and it's gonna bring you right back to jail. That's how the system is set up because when you go to jail, they gonna label you, right? Even if you get a felony, can't get no job. Ain't nobody gonna hire you and pay you no more money. So people say, I got a whole family, I got a family to take care of. If I had a family to take care of, you ain't gonna give me no job, so I'm gonna go back out and sell drugs. I'm gonna go back out, I'm gonna go back out there and rob somebody. Y'all follow me? So, but if we could catch them before they get back into the system, then guess what? They're in the church now. Y'all follow me? All right. Now, go down, go back to uh, let me give you this. Go back to go to uh, Proverbs. Now, everybody in here has a purpose, right? Everybody in here has a purpose, and every ministry leader, every pastor has a purpose and an assignment, right? So I'm assigned to you, and you're assigned to me, right? So whatever my assignment is, you have to be a part of that assignment. So whatever my vision is, and because you're a part of the ministry, it's your job to hold on to the vision and run with it. Say, Pastor, okay, Pastor, I see that this is, this is what we need to do. We need, we need to figure this out. We're about to go start feeding the homeless. We're about to get this shelter. We're about to do all this stuff. So I'm going to go grab, I'm going to grab whatever part of that vision is, and I'm going to run. I'm going to start building. Whatever you say about that vision, this is what I'm going to do. And this is, how, this is how companies are built. Companies are built based upon a vision. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Every company especially successful companies, they start off with a vision in mind, they write that thing out, they get some people that could help push the vision. And that's why every, all of y'all here today 
to hold a part of you, you didn't come, you don't come to church just to come here and sit and just listen to a word every Sunday. Every, that's not just that's not that's that's not ministry. When I when I'm when I'm ministering to you, that's a part of it. When you know you're ministering to me, that's a part of it, but that's not the whole thing. When you got a kingdom mind, it's, it's outside of, okay, let me come, I'm gonna do praise and worship, and I'm gonna go back home. Let me, let me come, I'm praying this Sunday, and I'm gonna go back home. I'm, I'm going to come, I'm going to do this, I'm going to be security, I'm going to do the media, and I'm going to go back home. That can't be your, that can't be your, 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 your whole mind. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Now, how excited, and this goes for the media team and everybody else, but y'all remember when I said, hey, I want a better camera. I said, I want y'all to put TVs up here. I want us to look a lot more professional. I want, everybody was getting excited. People was getting excited because they're trying to say, you know what, let's start painting, let's do this, let's, let's, put this. let's do that. And then some of y'all start catching on. Somebody called me and said, hey, Pastor, is it all right if, we, if I can hang this up on the wall? Go ahead and do that. That's going to break, you know, that, that's a part of the vision of beautifying and, you know, taking the, 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 the ministry visually to the next level. Amen. And so, you know, just like your specific job, it's like somebody going on a job. You know, you just got out of college and you did, a, you know, you did all this study, did all this work in college. You go on a job, get a job making seven twenty-five, and you just stay there and you're content with making seven twenty-five. So if I'm not going to, and I hear a lot of y'all say that's, that's dead, and, and, I, and I understand the, the lingo, I understand what that means. So if it's dead, then why in the world, or why would you allow the ministry or the vision of the ministry to be a 725 ministry? Why are we going to hold it? Why are we going to hold it? Now, if it's dead for you, and your, you know, everything you got going on, then why in the world would our mindset be 725 for the vision for the church? Some of y'all got minimum wage mentality when it comes down to the vision for the church. Just the bare minimum. Just to, you know, just, just that, that, that's it. We're not going to, you know, we don't want to see it greater. We don't want to. And then some people just don't care. Some people just don't care. Hey, listen, if we get a new building, we get it. If we don't, I'm fine. Come right here sitting on the same chair. I'm all right with this. I'm all right with that. It's all right. But listen, this ministry is greater than what we are. L.A. Sam. Listen, I've seen the potential of this ministry. I've seen hundreds of people come into church, the, the altar full with over 50 people praying for, and, and people, the, the church still packed out. I've seen the potential of this church. That's why my vision is big. I have a large vision. But I need some people that could think big like I think. I used to say a long time ago, if you think big, you get big. You think small, that's all you're going to get. Can I tell you something? When I was younger... I always said I want, I'm going to own my own business. That was a big, that, that was a big goal to be a little kid. It's a big goal to be a little teenager. I'm going right, well, listen, one day, all right, y'all playing. One of these days I'm going to have my own business. I'm going to have my own restaurant. One of these days, watch, y'all going to see. Watch, y'all going to see. And then guess what happened? It happened. I ain't worked for nobody over four years. But that was, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, that was my mindset. So when you have, listen, I know, I know a lot of y'all can't see let me, let me give you this. Go down there to, um, go to 2 Kings. And I'm going to pray for some eyes tonight because I want y'all to be able to see what I can see. 2 Kings chapter 6. Start at uh, 14, uh-huh. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and great hosts, and they came by night and could pass the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and host come past the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Now, the leader saw something that the subordinate didn't see. The leader saw something that the follower couldn't see. The leader saw that there was help there, but the, 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 the person that was behind said, no, I can't even see this. I can't see us getting through this. Right? Read, uh-huh. And, and Elisha said, 
So Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes. Now, wait a minute. This man can see. Ain't nothing wrong. He could see physically. He could see, but he couldn't see what the man of God saw. And because he couldn't see what the man of God saw, this is, he, got, he got prayed for his eyes. He got prayed for his eyes. Read it, huh? Open his eyes that he may see. Open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. And he saw. And he saw. Sometimes you need to pray and say, Lord, I need you to touch my eyes so I can see what Pastor could see. I need you to touch my mind so I can be a part of what he could see. Because what I see is past this, this, little, this little building here. Our, our vision is way past this. It is. Our vision is past these little four walls. I can see us, I can see us having our own community. Mm, amen. I see this. I can see us having our own gym. I can see us having our own plaza. I see everybody. I can see us having our own uh, uh, finance community or circulation of an economical system within the church. I can see that. But can I be honest? Everybody can't see it. And so when everybody can't see, it makes it hard for the pastor. He, I can see it. I'm like, yeah, listen, let, pump it up. Let's get this. Let's get this. And then if nobody else is tapped into it, nobody else is like, okay, pastor, I can see that. It's almost like the vision to just fade away and perish. Listen, if, if we don't continue to speak about the vision and be a part of it, it'll kill it. And God forbid, if I die today or tomorrow and this vision haven't even started yet, it, it, it just fall off. Because how many people got the vision in hand? How many people got it in their heart? How many people say, hey, listen, I'm going to listen. I don't care what's going on. I got to make sure this vision that pastor see, we got to push this thing along. Amen. And not have, you know, a lot of times people have a negative spirit with them when vision is being spoke about. They said, huh? And we got lucky when we, we raised that $30,000. Huh? <laughs> I don't know if we can. And, and we got another, we got a big event that I'm planning now. And we're we going we to raise three grand. $3,000 ain't no money. If we raise thirty thousand dollars in no time, we could we we surely can raise three thousand dollars in a few weeks. Three thousand dollars, so we can get this big platform, so we can do this huge evangelistical work, the big uh, stage, and you know all of that. That's a part of the vision. Amen. Amen. So we can't have people in their mind thinking like, "Hey, you know, I I don't know if it's gonna work," or "Hey, it's not enough of us to do that. It's not enough of." Listen, don't worry about everybody else as long as you got your hand on the board. Right. If, we got, if, if we got, listen, let, let, me, let, me, let me show y'all something. Uh, come here, y'all brothers. Let me, get, let me get five of y'all. All right, take my stuff off of here. All right, we got five brothers that's going to hold on to the vision. The vision is holding this table up in the air, right? All five of y'all hold it up in the air. All right. One of y'all let it go. What is support? Just one person. All right. All right. So we got four. Now somebody else lose the vision. Go on. Somebody else drop. All right. And we got three. Look, look, look how the, you see how the position changed. One person left off of this. So he said, you know what? I got to hold up whatever was left off right here. Somebody else lose it. Now. All right. Now we got one more. Look at that. Somebody's still going to hold up the even. So you can't worry about if there's a whole bunch of us holding up this table because if you ain't going to do your part, guess what? I'm going to hold up the slack. If you step away from the vision and if you go and you ain't going to do it, I'm going to hold up this side. And if you ain't going to hold up your side, I'm going to hold up your side. Good. Amen. So we can't have the mentality of, oh, if, you know, I, I ain't see brother such and such. He ain't come out to evangelize tonight. So I guess we'll have to do it. That's not, that, that's not. Kingdom minded, that's not vision minded. When you say, you know, oh, you know, I, I, I don't know about, uh, you know, brother, 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 such and such, he ain't come today. So are we still going to pray? Yeah, you're still going to pray. Are we still going to go knock on doors and invite people to the, us? It, it was supposed to be 10 of us, but it's only six of us now. So what? Still go. Don't let one person, you know, sometimes with that one, you know, you have a couple people that start backing out and fading out. Don't let them little bit, a few people stop the ministry from moving forward. You know, the Bible talks about Jesus. You know, the Bible talks about the multitude following him. 
Then it talks about 70 disciples. Then it talks about the 12 disciples. Then it talks about three. So you got different, different sizes, but the job still got done. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, now, where I got you at? All right, so he had him to open his eyes, right? Now, I want you to go to the book of Proverbs. Let me ask you this question. How, how many of y'all want to be a part of the vision? Good. All right. Proverbs 28 or 29. And, and I'll tell you this. I'm going to say this. I got to say this. A vision is just as important as a prophecy. A vision, it, you know how people start falling and oh glory and all that about a, about, about a prophecy and oh God going to do it oh, and you know bucking and all that. About the, you should be bucking when the man of God give you the vision. Because the vision is it, just as important as a prophecy because it was given the same way. Oh Lord, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. All right. 29, 18, uh-huh. Where there is no vision. Where there is no vision. The people perish. The people perish. But people he, start dying off where there's no vision. And we're grateful that God has blessed us with a lot of young people amen. to be able to hold on to the vision. Amen. Let me show you this. Let me go down, go down to the book of Acts chapter 2. We thank God for the older saints. Amen. We thank God for the older saints. But it's the, it's the younger saints that's going to be able to carry the vision. The Bible talks about, amen, the old man dreaming, but the young man having a vision. All right, read, uh-huh. Acts chapter 2 and um, 16. Stop there, uh-huh. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel... And it shall come to pass that in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Sons and daughters shall prophesy. Watch this. And your young men shall see visions. You're going to have young men seeing visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. Watch this. You can survive without a dream. But you can't survive without a vision. You cannot survive without, it, it'll, it'll close everything down. You can have a dream. Amen. Martin Luther King had a dream. Amen. But there are times where you, if you don't have a dream, it don't stop productivity. Amen. But when you have a vision and a visionary, it puts, see, the pastor has the vision and the saints, you should have the provision. You're supposed to be pushing the vision, whatever the vision is. Amen. And find out what role you are to play in the vision. What's your role? What, 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 what part are you supposed to be doing? Where are you supposed to be at concerning the vision? Amen. And, you know, I know sometimes, uh, you know, like, prime example, I think Sor uh, Soraya was pregnant uh, maybe last year or so. And... She know what my vision is, and because she couldn't get out and do certain things, she'll send me messages. Hey, Pastor, I found some land. Hey, Pastor, oh, check this out. You see this? Uh, almost every day, sending me things. So just because she was pregnant, couldn't go out, didn't stop her from being a part of the vision. And sometimes we allow little excuses like that to kind of, oh, I, 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 you know, my knee hurt today, so I ain't going to be able to go out and evangelize. <laughs> but you're on Facebook. But if you're on Facebook, that means you could share a message. Amen. Amen. But we don't, you know, we'll, we'll skip over all type of messages and see a fight going on Facebook. You click on the fight and watch the fight. You have all these shares about people cutting up and all these funny shares, but won't share a message. A message that was preached, a message for deliverance, a message that would draw people to the ministry. 
We're not sharing those, but it's something funny. We'll share it. We'll tag people and do all that stuff. But when it's a message. So now you got to, you know, kind of look to see, hey, am, am I productive when it comes down to the vision? What, what have I done lately to support whatever pastor was saying? What have I done lately to find out? And, you know, as much as, you know, and I know we teach on vision, you know, maybe a couple times a year, but to hear vision that much and not have the drive to find out what the vision is, that's baffling. If you don't have a clue, you know, what the vision is in totality, you don't have a clue of what some parts of the vision is, don't have none of that, and I, I, that that's, that's baffling because then I, I, what's the purpose of coming to ministry if you can't see it moving? If you don't want to see it move. Amen. I don't know about you, but I, 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 just, I want to go somewhere. I don't want to just stay in the same little box saying, and a, a lot of y'all spiritual life is like that because you can't see past where you are. And that's why you ain't a part of the vision because you can't see past where you are. See, if you got a person that's always in the, you know, trying to drive, you know, try to move and try to, you know, uh, 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 penetrate the spirit rim and go to different places, that's a person that's going to be a part of business. Say, hey, Pastor, what can I do to move forward? Because I'm trying to grow as well. And some people are, oh, some people are content just being baptized in Jesus' name and, and in spoken tongues. That's it. That's it. You know, that's it. Well, I don't got baptized in Jesus' name. I don't spoken tongues. You know, I'm, I'm good now. I ain't got to worry about nothing else. I'm, I'm good. But I'm going to be honest with you. Baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, that's not it. It's more, you, you need more than that to be saved. Yeah. Amen. All right, go down there, amen, to the book of Genesis. And to be honest, You know, the pastor preaching and giving out uh, vision is supposed to impregnate you. It's supposed to be the, the word and the vision is supposed to go through you and become alive in you. And a lot of y'all just so barren that you can't even get, it ain't even, they ain't even going in there. So that you can't be productive when it comes down to the vision. You can't even, you can't see past where you are, can't see past where the ministry is. Amen. You know, I can see, I see our choir being at least 100 people in the choir, in the big choir stand behind the, the pulpit. I can see all of that. I see more than 20 people on the praise team. I can see that. I can see, you know, hundreds of people coming in. I, I told y'all that vision that we had and the Lord confirmed it. When we was down there at, um, at uh, the graduation, uh, Georgia Southern graduation, and I had a vision of baptizing so many, I was on there baptizing so many people, and when we went out there, they had the same baptism pools we had. They had two of them, and it was full of water bottles. I said, wow, God, I see what you're saying. Amen. And we have to have that, that mind and that, you know, that, that mentality for vision. But, hey, listen. Since I've been in this city, I've baptized over 400 people. You know what the potential for a, a ministry is if, if there's four, over 400 people? And I think it's over 450. I think 400 is just, a, you know, that's almost hit and miss. But to baptize that many people, that's the potential of what the ministry could be. But we got to be able to get those nets. We got to be able to figure out ways to get in the community because that's a part of the vision. Amen. And I don't want people to just drag along and say, okay, Pastor want us to do this again. We need some people that's going to be excited about the vision. But yeah, I mean, just, oh, glory. I, man, Pastor said, we, you know, we're looking to do this. I'm excited. Anybody, want, anybody saw some land lately? I done saw this about the land. I seen this. I was driving around the neighborhood. I saw that. I can see the vision now. I'm excited about it. We need some excited folks. Some of y'all just dry and dead and just... <laughs> It's depressing sometimes. Some of y'all coming to church and look so dead and dry like you. You coming to church. 
Like you upset to be in there. Be, be excited about the Lord. Be excited about vision. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Yeah, somebody say, I got to be a part of the vision. Because I want this thing to be alive. Gen Genesis chapter 2. You know, God had a vision for Adam. Uh, go to 1 and 26, uh-huh. And God said, let us make man in our image at our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. That and was the vision. To be fruitful, multiply, have dominion. This, this, these are all, this was a vision that God was given to him. Amen. When you look down to... Uh, go to Genesis chapter 6. It was a vision for Noah. Noah had to build an ark. Amen. And, you know, that, that, that's quite a big vision for him to complete. You know how big an ark is? Anybody ever been on a cruise before? Jesus. Can you imagine somebody building something like that? That's big. It, it's huge. It's very big. When you have time, and if you travel, go down there to either Miami, uh, uh, either Miami or uh, or Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale probably a better, and you'll see all the yachts and all those different things like that. They got big yachts out there, almost look like cruise ships, but they have those big cruise ships. You start looking at that, and say, man, Noah built it. How in the world could Noah really see? I say, wow, God, you want me to build something like this? It almost looked impossible. I'm going to tell you something. Visions, it's supposed to look impossible. It's supposed to. It's supposed to look like, man, I, I don't know what we, can we, it, it, can we really do that? You know why? It's supposed to look impossible so that everybody can come together and make it possible. From your eyes, from your tunnel vision, from your little insight, from what you can see, it's impossible for us to get to that, that place that I'm saying, that big vision I had. From you, by yourself, you can't see it. But if we came together, say, okay, if I grab that block right there, you grab that piece right there, she grabbed that right there, he grabbed that right there, oh, it's starting to come together. Yeah. Amen. All right? And then also, well, I'm not going to move forward. I'm just going to go over there. And what it looked like Abraham, he had a vision and God spoke, amen, for him to have nations to come out of him. You find that in uh, Genesis, I think, 12 or 13. Amen. Uh, Moses' job was to take the children out of the out of Egypt. Uh, now let's go to Habakkuk chapter two. Look at somebody and say, "I gotta get this vision in my spirit." It's very important because, to be honest, you know we know that the Bible talks about. You know, uh, you know, the church serves as a woman. You all serve as a woman. And you got to get pregnant with this vision. Got to be able to get it in your spirit. Amen. All right, now go to Habakkuk 2. And verse number 1, uh-huh. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower uh -huh. and will watch to see what he will say unto me. Let, let me say this. How many of y'all would say that y'all have a pretty good relationship with your pastor? How many y'all would say that? Okay. The majority of them? Okay. All right. Now, can I tell you? Somebody said, what did they say back there? All right. All right. If, let me say this. If the church is producing, that shows that you have a good relationship with your pastor. Because whatever is spoken, just like a, a, a man and a woman. When a man and a woman come together and they have relations, they produce children. 
So when you have a good relationship with your pastor and whatever the pastor is saying, it gets in your spirit, and so you start producing. So you become, produ you become productive to what the man of God is saying. Amen. That shows that that, that relationship. So in your, in your mind, when you're thinking about things that I've administered to about, you know, specific things going on in the ministry, the vision, all those things like that, and you're helping them come to pass, that shows that you have a good relationship. Amen. All right. Uh, we're read, uh-huh. And what I shall answer when I am reproved. Uh-huh. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables. All right. Write the vision and make it plain. Now, I don't know. Uh, is my, did I, did I, who I sent the vision to? Oh, you got it with you, Ron? You got it. Could, could they hook it up back there on the media? Can y'all do that, Mike? Okay. I wrote the vision and I want, I want to just go over a few things. It's not my whole vision. And one thing about a visionary, everything that I see, I can't write down. You can't, it, it's, it's, it's hard. And I guarantee you, when you look at the book, book of Revelation, when it comes down to, you know, uh, uh, Revelation of Jesus and what John saw, I guarantee you John couldn't write down everything that he saw. It's impossible. When you have visions, it's impossible to record every single detail. So you'll see a lot, amen, of the things that I see and a lot of things that I say or speak of is just bits and pieces of what the vision is. So I done wrote it, and I want to see if this is plain enough for y'all to see it. All right? How long we got back there? Okay. All right. I got seven people back there, y'all. Try to get that thing moving. All right, let's read the rest of that verse. Uh huh. And the Lord answered to me and said, write the vision and make it plain uh -huh, upon the tables. That he may run that readeth it. All right. So what happens is when I get the vision, oh, pastor said this about the vision. I got to go do something about this. All right. He want to start doing this. He want to start building this. So I took it and I ran with it. When you have the vision, you don't just get it and hold it and sit with it and say, oh, you know, pastor did say he want to have a soup kitchen. He did say he want to start, you know, a, a, a shelter, a shelter for battered women. He want to do all these different things, and you just, you just hold it. Haven't done no research on how could we get something built. Haven't done any research on how we can get a grant to get something built. Haven't done any research on anything concerning the vision because you ain't running with it. When you run with it, you take hold of it and say, oh, Pastor said, we got, oh, I'm excited about this. I'm, it's almost like somebody got a football. You know, threw the football, caught it, and you can see the finish line. And a lot of times, man, when people see that finish line, I don't know if you ever played football before, and you see the, you see the end zone, and you're right there. Nobody's by, behind you chasing you. See, you get so excited. And once you get there, it's almost like you just throw the ball down and say touchdown. And, you, you know, a lot of times they do little praise dances or whatever, victory dances. So that's what <laughs> – so when you get the vision, you take it to the end zone. Take it to the end zone and then do something extra. You know, they got two-point conversions and field goals. Do put a little, put a little extra spin on it. Kick it in the field goal. Amen. So he said, when you read it, you must run with it. All right? Y'all got it yet? Still working on it? Okay. All right, go to the next verse, huh? Pull it up. <laughs> Y'all touch out just. Y'all been pulling it up for a little while. Oh, Mike, Mike, they need you back there. Where's Mike Boyer at? He ain't back there? For the vision is yet. For an appointed time. For the vision is yet for what? An appointed time. Appointed time. You know what that means? That means that whatever the vision is, it's not going to happen overnight. Mm -hmm. So it's an appointed time, meaning that, you know, it, I can see it far off, but I can see it. I don't know if you ever, amen, used to walk or jogged or did anything of that nature. And you see where, you know, say as you're working out, you're doing a five-mile walk, a run, and you can see that spot where you're supposed to be at. You know, you, you, that five, you, you know, you at four and a quarter, boy, you knees starting to hurt, and you're looking, but you can <laughs> see it. <laughs> you, you can see it afar off, and then so you start getting excited to get to wherever it is, but it's far off, but as long as I could see it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Look at somebody say, it might be far off, might be far but off. I could see it. All right, we're still pulling it up. 
All right? This is part of the vision. Amen. All right, good. All right, Josh? Mighty God. Come on up here. You got your glasses? All right. Amen. All right? This is now I want and I want to get a copy. I'm gonna get a copy of this. I'm gonna get a copy of this and then we'll get everybody, you know, a copy of this is a this is a uh, um a generalized vision uh that I have. I have a little bit a few more in detail, but this is some of the things that I wanted the, uh that's the part of this. All right, read Josh. The mission of the Redeeming Love Apostolic Faith is to connect people to God and connect people to the purpose God has for their lives. All right, so the number one thing that I have on the vision with our mission, the mission that we have is to connect people to God. What does that deal with? Relationships, what else? How do we get people connected? Where, how do we, how we connect people to God? Where are we supposed to go? Evangelism. It starts with evangelism. So now if I know that a part of you know, the first line in the vision statement is talking about connecting people to God. So now I need to go through my phone to find out which of my friends not connected to God. Then I need to go to the grocery store, find out some folks. Then I need to make sure when, I, when I, we out there and pastors preaching in the streets, I want to make sure that we're connecting with people. Without pastors saying, hey, did y'all get their number? Hey, did, have y'all talked to them? I said, listen. I, 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 I shouldn't have to say that. I've been pastoring eight years now, and some of y'all have been here for at least, you know, that long and some three, four, five years, but y'all know that you need to connect with people. Y'all see new faces coming to church. Amen. You know, every new person that ever came to the church that ever came to my office and talked about the ministry, they'll say, hey, you know what? What I really like about this ministry is that everybody is so loving, everybody is so kind, and it, it's just that good atmosphere. People ask me for my number, you know, we go out and all the different things like that. That connection. Number one thing, read, uh-huh. We are passionate about helping people nurture their relationship with God, find their ministry within the kingdom. and get Find them. their ministry within the kingdom. So it's our job to make sure that when you come here, you're not coming here just to sit on the, sit on the pews. There's something that you assign. Everybody in here has an assignment. You're not just coming here just to sit down. That ain't no assignment. There's an assignment that you're supposed to be involved in. There's some talents, there's some abilities that you have that God put in you specifically for ministry. Amen. That's just like somebody that got a beautiful voice and don't want to sing. So I'm, a, no, I'm, I'm, I'm all, I don't want to sing. I don't want to sing at all. Amen. That's like somebody that could, that, that's an artist and don't want to draw. That's just like somebody that know how to fix cars and won't work on cars. Amen. So it's like somebody know how to cut hair and won't cut it. Somebody know how to do hair and don't do it. All of the abilities, but you're not using the abilities that God put in you. God did not, let me be honest with you. I have no other choice but to lead people. No choice. I gotta try to run from it, forget about it. It don't matter, wherever I go, I can just go work a regular job. If I stay that job at least 90 days, I'm going to be promoted to doing something. I'm going to be leading something. I'm going to be over somebody. I'm going to be leading something because that is on my life. That's something within me. Amen. And so when you have that in you, you can't run from it, no matter where you go. If I stop pastoring today and hang it up, go out there and work somewhere, I'm going to be pastoring at the job because I'm going to be over somebody. Whatever you, listen, <laughs> Amen. And that's why a lot of you all, you know, some of the things that, just like this young man here, he was a president over a, a ministry. Now he's out in a position as a pastor somewhere else in the ministry as a pastor, active pastor at another church. Man. Because he was, look, God will use that same thing that you had out there and use it for the ministry. Amen. All right, read on. Huh? And get them plugged into serving our community and the world. Get them plugged in. How do we get them plugged in? We got to share the vision. How are you going to share it if you don't know it? How are you going to share something you don't know? Amen. You don't want to be like Fox News telling lies and stuff. You want to make sure, amen, that whatever you're saying is a part of the vision. All right, read. Uh -huh. Our vision is to spread the apostolic truth globally to impact lives. Now, how could, all right. How could everybody, everybody in here that has a phone 
uh, everybody in here that has a phone can be able to do this. How could everybody in here spread the apostolic truth globally? Share it. It's so easy. It's, it's so everybody. Matter of fact, everybody take your phone out real quick. Everybody got a phone. Anybody got a phone that has a Facebook page? We got a Facebook page. Just take your phone out real quick. I want you to go to Facebook real quick. Hey, I want somebody to put a timer on real quick. Put your timer on. Somebody time this for me. Just want to see how long this will take. All right. Everybody got their phone out? I'm going to make sure everybody get the vision. Y'all ain't got to try to squint your eyes to get the thing. I'm going to make sure y'all get it. Send it to everybody. All right, I'm going to let you know where to stop. Everybody on Facebook? Everybody got Facebook open? All right. Now start the timer. I want you to go to Redeemer Love Church of God, the Bible Way page, and share this video. And when you get done, just hold your hand up in the air when you get done. Turn your, you know, did your drive ready? Praise God. Yes. Huh? He did, did it already? How, long, how fast is that? Seven, less than seven seconds? Pretty fast. How, anybody else did it? Anybody, and nobody know where the page is? Some of y'all don't even like your own church page. <laughs> what you're typing in to redeem and love. R-E-D-E-E. -E -E. <laughs> all right? So all of y'all did that. That was less than a minute, right? Less than a minute to be a part of the vision. How many times do we have services a week? Anybody know? <laughs> About four services, right? At least. Without, you know, we don't really video record the auxiliary nights. Amen. Which I'm going to be spending some time with y'all on auxiliary nights. But we don't really share it on the auxiliary nights. But on our Bible study and our worship services, put those together. We got about four services, right? Three on first day, right? Yeah, three and then this midweek. Oh, street service? Oh, yeah. Then that's what that. Five? Five? I'm talking about once we record. Y'all recording prayer service? Yes, yeah, so, yeah, so that's about, about five services. All right, average five services. Now, 10 seconds. So 10 seconds for five services. How many is that? That's 50 seconds. So you're telling me that within a week's time, I can share five videos in less than a minute. You see how I gave you an area of objective to reach a goal? Just that easy. See how easy that is? That was easy. Now, we just did a step in the goal. So in every service that we have, if we could just, because I remember, uh, when, uh, when I, used to, we had, I used to make everybody share during a certain time, I think, but when we was at the other, uh, other building, take out your phone, go to share the video. Because I know y'all going to forget, go to share the video, <laughs> right? So if we do that, now we're spreading the ap apostolic truth globally. Y'all follow me? All right, read, uh-huh. We cultivate leaders that will help attract and develop others into matured saints. All right. Now, how many of y'all, how many of y'all preachers, all y'all preachers come in? Have you been ministering and preached before? Come up here real quick. All y'all young ministers. All right. All right. Now, how many of y'all are leaders over a specific uh, auxiliary? Stand up. You know, leader over auxiliary. Come, come here if you're leading over auxiliary, a leader over something. All right. That's it. You a leader or something? There? Okay. Everybody, if you're a leader, you know, they, yeah, these are preachers. Yeah. All right. So leaders. All right. Are you a leader? Okay. All right. So, what does that say? Read that part again. We. Cultivate leaders. Cultivate that, leaders that will help attract. That will help attract and develop others uh -huh. into mature sex. All right. So we I done did my job by cultivating leaders. And that's your job to develop the saints into mature saints. So that's a part of the vision. So now leaders, y'all got an idea of what you're supposed to be doing. So you'll go gather or grab somebody, a young, young person in the church, and minister to them and help them become a mature saint. That's your job. That's a part of the vision. For some of y'all selfish with y'all little salvation. Well, the Bible said work out my own self salvation, all that stuff. You want to talk about, but, but, but what about a part of the vision about helping somebody get to the next level? What about being midwives, helping somebody produce? That's in the Bible. Amen. All right, y'all be seated. Thank you. All right, so, so when, you, when you can start seeing the vision, 
Hey, man, does, it make it, does it make a little more sense now? Just a little bit? All right. We're going to make it more, a little more sense. All right. Read. We strategically reach for the wounded. We strategically reach for the wounded. So it's our mission and our vision to strategically find wounded people. How do we do that? Where do we go? How do I find somebody that's wounded? Anybody know? Anybody want to take a guess? <laughs> huh? Hit the streets. Go to different communities. You will see some, you can tell when somebody going through something. You can look and see where people are in their life and you can just go, hey, can I pray with you? It's nothing wrong with you going and praying with somebody, grabbing their hands down there. What happened to free prayer? Remember y'all used to do free prayer? Y'all had a whole bunch of people come to church off of free prayer. What happened to that? Y'all going places, holding up signs, said free prayer, free prayer. We just want to pray with you. That's a part of the vision. Because guess what? When people that are wounded see some free prayer, hey, I, uh, young, oh, hey listen, I know I, I can't put two prayers, you know, two words in a prayer that's made my life. I need you to pray with me, brother. Right? So that's a part of the vision, to strategically find wounded people. Go down there to some of these shelters and where, minister to some of these women that have been broken, beat up, and battered. Minister to some of these women that have been out there on drugs. Minister to some of these men that have been out there on drugs in these specific facilities. We got to find it. Do the research. I'm giving you the vision. You take, you get that pro vision, and you work it. You find out ways to figure out, hey, how could I do that? Okay, pastors that find the wounded people. How do I find wounded people? Where do they normally be at? Amen. Any of y'all been wounded before? Anybody done been do some stuff and been, you know, maybe battered or been something? Where was you at? Where did you hang out at? If I was a battered woman, where would I be? If I was a drug addict, where would I be? If I was an alcoholic, where would I be? This make sense? All right, read, uh-huh. And broken to restore them back to Christ. To restore them back to Christ. That's a part of our vision to find people that are broken and wounded and bring them back to Christ. That's our vision. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, read, uh-huh. We embrace every ethnic background. We embrace every ethnic background. Stand up, Valerie. Hispanic, right? All right. Uh... <laughs> Brother Frank, <laughs> he's biracial, got a white parent and a black parent, uh, Mariah, Shauna, biracial, Mike, amen. So we embrace different cultures. That's a part of the vision. Amen. I didn't miss nobody, did I? All right. Just want to make sure. All right. Amen. <laughs> All right. Read, huh? Understanding salvation is unto all. Understanding that salvation is unto all. So we know that it ain't just black folk that's going to be saved. We know it ain't just be Chinese people that be saved. We know it ain't just going to be white folks that going to be saved. Everybody can be saved. And so we need to stop targeting only black folks. Oh, Lord, I done said something wrong now. You don't see a white brother right there. He be on the stand reading newspaper. You see a black person over there. You're going to walk over there and say, I'm going to go. <laughs> I know how to minister to my kind. Y'all got to do better now. If you're uncomfortable, take Mike with you. He'll talk to anybody. <laughs> Mike will find anybody to talk to. he say, hey, what you got there? What's that? What's that? What you playing with? Okay. Play any music? <laughs> you go to any church? Automatically, oh, that's his conversation. Every time, it don't matter wherever that boy is at, he going to ask somebody about some church. Hey, you go to, you go to church? I play the guitar. <laughs> Amen. All right, read, huh? More to ministry than dancing and shouting. All right, it's more to ministry than dancing and shouting. Yeah. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with praising God, but it's more after you get done dancing and shouting, take that vision and dance and shout with that. <laughs> Gonna take it out into the streets and start doing it. Amen. All right, read, huh? Cultivate young men to be sent out to declare the word of the Lord. Uh -huh. Fostering a farming ground for readiness across the board. All right, so I've done my part with cultivating young men to be sent out. I have two sons that's out basically pastoring churches. Pastor Tim, that's my son, he's sent out. Minister Josh, he's sent out. I'm working. What are you doing? It take a lot 
for a young man to go out there and preach to somebody like I'm preaching to y'all. It's a big responsibility. So if I'm doing my job, what are you doing? I have an assignment as a pastor. You have an assignment as a saint. What are you doing? What's your assignment? Yes, I knew it was going to be quiet. All right, read, uh-huh. Daycare. Employ saints and keep the revenue going through the church to pay. So off. I want to build, and I'm still waiting on them folks. Ain't nobody bought that building yet. I'm going to buy it, though. I'm going to get it. As soon as they lower that price to where I'm going to buy it, they're going to lower it. Amen. Because I want to get a daycare. Now, this daycare, because we're not just taking and save kids. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Daycare ain't just for saved folk because you got kid, people that's having babies that ain't saved. So what does that do? That draws in more people. So when they come in to pick up their child, you can say, hey, you know, we, what they learn today? Well, you know, for the alphabet, we taught some scriptures. Oh, y'all teach scriptures here? Yes. Yeah, this is the name of our church, blah, 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 blah. Bang, guess what? We got somebody interested in finding out more about the church because that's a net. Amen, y'all follow me? All right, read, uh-huh. Grade school to employ saints and keep the revenue flowing. So not only a daycare, but I want to have a school. A school. But this school is to employ saints and to gather people that are out there to come into the church. Amen. Because not every teacher, amen, is saved. You get one teacher that's not saved, bring them in, guess what happens? We got enough saints around there to turn them on around. Read, uh-huh. Soup kitchen to feed the homeless, hungry, free food once a week to get back to the community. Free food once a week. Cause now, if we get a name about giving stuff away, people start understanding, man, you know, I like that church. You know, I, I know they pastor, he, 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 he crazy. He be out there fighting for justice, but not only fighting for justice, you know, he, they, they go out there and feed the hungry and the needy. Amen. It don't take nothing for us to get a few little boxes of pizza or you want to, you know, or even somebody had an idea, a little brown bag lunch. Just make some bologna sandwiches and a little bag of chips and a little apple or something like that, a little, little juice, and hand it out. Or a bottle of water, that's cheaper. You get, you get 32 waters for $3, $3, $4. Amen. Amen. We need some more people. Y'all sleep. I'm talking about the vision now. Y'all need y'all to win. Amen. Talking about the vision. I thought y'all going to be pumped up tonight. We talking about the vision again. We talking about the vision. Yeah, amen, Pastor. Come on. Yeah, we, don't, we see the vision. We're going to look at it when we get home. Come on. I had time. We didn't work all day. I worked all day too, but I'm excited about the vision. Amen. Some of y'all just content, man. I ain't content. All right, read, uh-huh. Build a group home for young men and women sponsored by the church. Building a group home. Let Tavon, Davon do their thing. You know, get, we're going to build a group home for, for kids, you know, that, that are suffering in them other systems. And we can show them how kids should be treated. And guess what happens to that? Hey, those kids, they can have a way to salvation. Teenagers, young boys. Remember that one time you had about eight or nine little young boys that was coming to the church? They, they always remember this. They, someone, I, we were somewhere and, I, and they drove by and they saw me and somebody, another minister or somebody, and they saw that, oh, hey, they knew who it was because they're going to remember. I baptized all of them, didn't I? I baptized all, every last one of them. Amen. So when we see stuff like that, getting those group homes, not just for boys, but for girls as well, showing people that we care about people and not just care about coming to church and just being, you know, our salvation to ourselves, but we're looking out for people that's in the world. All right? Come on. Program for battered women. Program for battered women. Drug abusers. Drug abusers. Alcohol abusers. Alcohol abusers. And have a dormitory for them. All right, so if we don't have the dormitory yet, guess what we can do? We can have programs. So you don't think, yeah, let me tell you something. You don't have to be no licensed person to help have a little meeting in the circle and, you know, people talk about their issues and you give them a prescription that, you, that can help them. Hey, you know, I, I used to be, you know, I was a drug addict and, you know, I was an alcoholic and this is what I did to recover. You know, I switched it because I realized that drug abuse was a worship. So I switched my worship out. So I started worshiping God versus the drug. 
Y'all follow what I'm saying? So when you, you, you could minister to people in those specific situations, you know, bad women, drug abuse, alcohol abuse, we can, we can put out a little post. Hey, we're going to have a, you know, a, 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 a AM. Oh, hey, y'all know they say AA meeting, but we have an apostolic meeting. Amen. They have the alcohol meeting. We have another meeting for those people that say we're gathering. If you are uh, uh, struggling with alcohol, if you're struggling with drug addiction, if you're struggling with all this stuff, on Tuesday nights so or Thursday night, come meet down here at Redeemer Love Church of God the Bible Way. We're having a meeting for everybody that's a, on drug abuse, alcohol abuse, any of those different things, sexual abuse, anything. And what we do is we have different people ministering that night, catering to those needs. That's the start. We, if we don't have the dormitory, at least we can get the, get the program going. Does this make sense? It's a vision. Uh-huh. Read. College for trades. All right, college for trades. So what that, what that means is push people to get trades, trade school, trading school, you know, electricians and plumbers and, you know, builders, different things like that. So, you know, they won't have a fifty or $60,000 tuition uh, 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 to pay back when they get out of school. Y'all ain't said something. Some of y'all hurt that thing hurting you now, hurting that pocket now. With all them loans and stuff like that. You could have been a plumber making way more money. Amen. Doing plumbing and electric electrician work. You know, a plumber makes about $150 an hour. And sometimes they, when they come and just inspect it, it's an $85 charge. And it don't even cost half the money to go, go to a trade school than it is to go to a four-year college. University, yes. Uh-huh. Yep. And no, man, you get you an H, you get you an HVAC uh, degree and working on, listen, air conditioners break. Every year. Can I tell you something else? That break every year, all the time? Cars. Be a mechanic. You know what happens also? Toilets get stopped up. That ain't gonna never stop happening. People, gonna, it's all, people always are building, so you always need an electrician, always gonna need a plumber, always gonna need HVAC. And, and them programs pay. Them programs pay. You know, them mechanics, man, they, they be, man, this man tried to charge me uh, almost $200 to fix two brakes. Yeah, I, I, said, I said, how much is that worth? I said, 175 I said, okay, all right. I left. I put them on my, me and uh, D'Angelo put them on myself. Put them on, <laughs> pop them off, pop them right back on. You know why? A lot of people don't know how to change brakes. So when a lot of people don't know how to do something, they take advantage uh, you know, if you don't know, ain't nobody know how to do no plumbing. And people don't know how to snake and do all the people don't know how to do that stuff. So you know what? If a lot of people don't know how to do it and I can do it, I'm going to charge arm and a leg. Amen. Yes. Uh -huh. The little snake. Plastic, and it got these little things on it, hooks little, on it. Yeah, stick it, it down there, and pull it right it on up. all that stuff. Yeah, you're supposed to reel it. In. You got reel it in there. Yeah, I learned. Yeah, I learned how to do a lot of stuff on my own because folks don't know. You know, people. Yeah, YouTube teach you how to do stuff, all type of stuff, man. People charge you twenty five dollars to change your battery. All you gotta do is pop it out and put it back in. All right, all right. Read the next little bullet point here. New church will have the professional cameras for advertising. And so, you know, when, when I looked at that, you know, when you look at our, our page now, I look at our YouTube, it look a lot more professional. Amen. Look a lot more professional. The, the sound is not, you know, the, the camera is not recording the sound out of here, but we got a little, uh, it was like moderate, what is it called? A, a focus, a focus right, a rat, something like that. Whatever it is. But what happens is, everything I say through the mic, it goes straight to the camera, just like I do at the temple. So it's not by the sound through these speakers here, but whatever I'm saying here, it goes straight down there into the system because we're trying to level up. And I spent some money on that camera. I spent a lot of money on the stand. 
with that tape on it. But uh, <laughs> spent a lot of money on that. Amen. We did this, all this stuff. We, we're doing this to get, you know, let me tell you something. When, when people, uh, you know, you want to try to attract a certain type. Because you're going to get some people that's going to come to church, and there's some people that are looking to see well, what kind of church they have. Let me see how their media is. Is it on a professional scale? Because they got churches that they call ghetto churches. They don't have nothing right. Ain't nothing look, you know, stuff don't look up to par. And, the, you know, stuff start, you know, all, all that stuff like that. They're like, man, that church is ghetto. I don't want to go there. But they want to look for something that, you know, look a little more spiffy. A little more, you know, on, on a different scale, different notch. You follow what I'm saying? You know, because pe people are watching, people are watching, and people see an apostle came, he said, son, it look beautiful in here. You know, he and all these different things like that. So I know people see. They see the professionalism. They see how the camera system looks. They see the little title on there, got, you know, the name of the minister that's ministering during that time, all that stuff like that. That's professional. Y'all don't even be thanking God for the little, we, we doing little stuff, you know, just little step ups. Amen. You know, we put this here. I thought this was nice. Put it over here instead of being over there. Everybody, we got to be this one way and then the next service like this, Sunday school, <laughs> you know, about facing. But they said, let, you know, let's put the board on the other side and it make, make more sense. And the lighting is better and because it looks a little more professional. Y'all follow what I'm saying? So that's why we get new cameras. That's why we got new stuff. All right, read, huh? Goal is to have a membership of 300. Oh. Yeah, uh, uh, uh. We read this already? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, so the goal is to have membership of 300 to 450. That's the vision. And it's, listen, that is easy. I'm telling you, because I've seen it. When we started the ministry and I started praying, man, what, man, them people were coming in. Like, I was like, man, I remember one Sunday, 15 people joined the church. And I was like, I told my mom, I said, man, this thing, it's going too fast. <laughs> and during that time, I was pastoring, but I was more so just preaching. So you know how I talk to a lot of y'all and we be on the phone and dealing with your different issues and stuff like that? I didn't have that as much as I have now. But during that time, it was just all preaching. People was just drawn by the ministry, drawn by the preaching. So I know what the potential of this ministry can be. And we will get there. Amen. 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 But I'm going to be honest with you. I can't do it by myself. Minister Josh can't just do it alone with me. Minister Francois, Minister Williams, uh, and uh, Sister Reynolds, and, you know, Sharonda. We, 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 we can't do this by ourselves. We need everybody collectively. Amen. I'm going to tell you something, and, I, and I'm going to be closing here in a second. I was putting up, uh, uh, we was doing a roof, and I was doing inside the roof, and I was putting up a sheetrock on the inside of the, uh, uh, in the kitchen. And I tell you what, putting that sheetrock up by yourself will kill you. And I had poor little Draylon was over there. <laughs> Draylon was holding him. He's like, you? Yeah. Who, Pastor? Ooh. I was like, son, just hold up just a little, just a little longer now. Just hold, up, hold up just a few more minutes. But putting up one little piece of sheetrock, we had, I have a joint, you know, had just me and Draylon. You know, we probably needed a couple more people, but we, you know, we, we put it up. It was a little, oh, KK was there too. KK helped me. She had to stand up. She was a little taller than Draylon, so she had, they had to switch positions. <laughs> Draylon was just missing the mark, so <laughs> KK came over and kind of put it up. Uh, but <laughs> the reason why I'm saying this is that when you're building, it's going to take more than just one person. Even if you have a person that's a builder and they do a lot of work by themselves, they're going to need somebody to say, hey, hand me that hammer. I'm at the top. Hey, hand me the nail. Hand me the screwdriver. Hand me the drill. Got somebody to be able to assist. So I can't do this thing by myself. To get to that number, we, I can't do it by myself. I need everybody to help me collectively. All right, scroll up a little bit. Is that the end of it? All right, so that's basically, in a nutshell, that's what it is. All right, clap your hands, give God praise tonight. All right, now y'all. Give me a few more minutes. Yeah. I know y'all, you know, ain't too excited about the vision, but I need y'all to. All right. Now, go back to Habakkuk chapter 2, and then I got two more scriptures, and then we're going to close. Now, 
I'm going to say this. They got, you know, people that, that, you know, what's the cheapest little dinners that you can make? You know, them little quarter legs? Okay, so how much are them quarter legs cost? Quarter legs, about $30? Yeah, they come in the case. Yeah, like, about $37. And how many pieces you get in there? You get 40 or 50 pieces of chicken, and all you got, or all you paid was $40. You get some cabbage, uh, a thing of cab a cabbage head don't cost nothing, but it's always less than three dollars. You can get some, you know, uh, 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 a uh, a starch or something like that. Get get Joel, Where's Joel that Joel back there. Okay, Got a lot of people back there. All right, got uh, and get Joel to you know bake a, a crunch cake or whatever kind of cake, and we just y'all can sell plates. Go to different. Uh, barber shops, hair salons, all these different things. Hey, listen, on this specific day, our ministry, this is what we're selling. We're selling these little dinners for $7, $8. Barbers, they, they got to eat. And they always want something to eat. And if it's good, they're going to be looking for you. If on them Thursdays, they're going to be out there looking. At, hey, that, where that little church at? They call them Redeeming Love Church. <laughs> where, that little, where that little church of God the Bible we at? I need that little quarter leg today. Right? So if we did that once a week, and went out and sold dinners and different things. Like Those are ideas y'all supposed to be coming up with. Y'all supposed to come up with that stuff. Say, hey, Pastor, you know, we, we, we bought a little case of chicken, and we're about to sell these dinners, and we're going we're gonna to put this towards the building fund, or we're going to put this towards whatever part of the ministry that we want to do, right? Because what I've been doing my part, when y'all been looking for transportation and stuff like that, I done bought two buses. That first one, you know, we ain't talking about it. But, 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 but. That bus that I bought that wasn't no good, I sold it. Yeah. So I know how to recover. Now, some of y'all need to learn how to recover. <laughs> so we done bought a bus. That's something. To, we, what, what other church in our district got a bus? What other churches out here in Statesboro got buses? Nobody. Why? Because when I, I got a visit, hey, listen, this is what I want to get. I'm going to tell you something. When I look at, when I look at uh, our, our ministry and I see where we are and I say, hey, Listen, we need to get that. And what happens? It jumps off because y'all jump hold of the, you know, be a, be a part of that vision. You don't see many buses out here in this city when it took home the uh, 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 churches. Amen. You don't. Amen. Now we need a van. And I got, the, I've been asking y'all to find a van for the past two months because we can't go pick up nobody on a school bus to bring them to church. Two people. We ain't about to. <laughs> Who driving that bus down there just to pick up two people like we, you picking them up and take them to, to the middle school or something? <laughs> Call the boy. So we need people to jump on top of the vision. And when you, and, and a, lot of, a lot of churches do have, you know, want to get buses and get vans. You know why they don't have it? Because nobody's jumping on the vision. It ain't the pastor's fault. It's the people's fault. Oh, Lord. It's not, the, it's not the man of God's fault because they're pushing, that, pushing it out there, but it's the people's fault because they're not receiving it. They're not saying, hey, you know what? We do need to get that. If we're going to be evangelizing, we're going out here preaching to these people that ain't got no vehicles or they don't have this, hey, we can go pick them up in a van. But if we don't have people that's saying, hey, we can do this or let's find this or, you know what, let's go start selling dinner so we can buy a van. Let's sell dinner so we can buy this or let's sell that. because And, and some of y'all be trying to, you know, and it don't make sense to sell it to each other here. I texted everybody, hey, you know, we having a, a fundraiser. I need everybody to buy dinner. But you got every auxiliary that's selling. You, you can't sell to each other all the time. You got to get out there and sell it to people that's out there. Because what happens is, okay, <laughs> prime example, all right? Deja, I'm coming to your house, you, 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 or your ministry. Say, for you got a thing for the praying women. Y'all selling fish, five dollars, right? I go over there and buy you buy five dollars fish from you, and then on on the next night, I'm selling fish, and I call you and say, hey, you not bought some fish from you? I need you to buy some fish from me. Now that same five dollars that you gave me, uh, I, I gave you, you got to give right back to me. So we ain't, ain't, there's no money coming out of me. I'm giving you five dollars on Wednesday. You give me the next five dollars on Thursday. Where, where, where's the money at? That, that, that what we just did was we recycling the money right here. 
There's no, that's not, that's not income. That's a, a, a what's it called, a, a pass off. A <laughs> kick off and you're kicking it back. Kick off and you're kicking it back. But if I, if I get that $5 from you, go out there, down there to that barber shop, get those $5 from them, you know, then it was your turn. I can give you a lead. Hey, hey, I, I sold some fish down there. What's the name? Down there at that, at that uh, barber shop down there. And so you say, hey, you know what? I, I need to go there too. Because guess what? They didn't give you, they, you know, you, you're not giving them no money back. Because you're not going to get your haircut. You follow what I'm saying? So if we're, if we're doing this in the right way, and so we got to get that mindset. We can't be here just trying to sell. You selling me a piece of pie today, and I'm going to sell you a piece of cake tomorrow. You sell me a piece of chicken today, I'm going to sell you a piece of uh, 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 smoked neck ribs on the next day. <laughs> All right? Now, go back to Habakkuk. All right, y'all brothers back there. On, Joe, you awake back there? Get that scripture up there. Habakkuk chapter 2. All right? So, we need to get some more people that have the ability to go out. Go out. Go out and reach. Amen. Somebody shout Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You know, a lot of people ain't get to that promised land. And you know why? Because they couldn't see it. A lot of the children of Israel couldn't cross over because they couldn't see it. They couldn't see it. And uh, I think only two of them was crossing, but all, of them, all they did was complain Complain. Uh, y'all in the wilderness, y'all ain't got nothing to drink. This man gets some water out of a rock and get you something to drink. Y'all hungry. This man called down manna from heaven and y'all get bread out the sky. But you still can't see getting to the destination. You can't see getting to the next level. Y'all done see all the stuff that happened in this ministry, seeing all the different things that God can do in this ministry, but you can't see past where we are or see past where you are. Amen. All right, I'm about to close here. All right, Second Chronicles, chapter ten. All right, ten and one, huh? And Rehoboam went to Shechem. For to Shechem were all Israel come to make him king. And it came to pass when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, was in Egypt, whither he had fled from the presence of Solomon the king, heard it, and Jeroboam returned out of Egypt. And they sent and called him. So Jeroboam and all Israel came and spake to Rehoboam, saying, Thy father made our yoke grievous. Now, therefore, ease thou somewhat the grievous servitude of thy father. So he said, your, your daddy was a little tough on us. And we need you to lighten up a little bit. Uh -huh. And his heavy yoke that he put upon us, and we will serve thee. Uh -huh. And he said unto them, come again unto me after three days. And the people departed. And King Rehoboam took counsel with the old men that had stood before Solomon, his father, while he yet lived saying, What counsel give ye men to return answer to this people? Uh -huh. And they spake unto him, saying, If thou be kind to this people, and please them, and speak good words to them, they will be thy servants forever. If thou be kind, we got to be, you know, when you're dealing with people in your specific auxiliary and you want to see that vision of coming past, you got to be nice to folks. Amen. Can't be being nasty, yelling at people, talking to people all sideways and saying whatever, just stuff just flying out your mouth when you don't care. People ain't going to want to do stuff for you. Amen. Amen. When I were, and, and when you look at, and I'm not going to read this whole chapter, but at the end of the chapter, you'll see that they bucked on them. They, they said, man, we ain't doing that. You want to keep us working hard like this? Man, we ain't about to do this mess for you. <laughs> so after a while, when people are being grieved on work, and you don't ever say, you know, that they've done anything good or good job. Right. They'll start pulling back and don't want to do any more work. And so when you look, you read that whole chapter, you'll find that as leaders and some of y'all on the auxiliaries, y'all need to make sure that y'all talking to people and dealing with them right so that your ministry can grow as well. 
Because if you're not and you're being nasty and talking to people nasty, ain't nobody want to do nothing for you. Amen. Amen. It's a certain way you're supposed to talk to folks. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody, listen, ain't nobody your child in here but your child. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So you got to remember that when I'm dealing with people in order for that vision to expand, I got to learn how to be nice. And some of y'all, you know, none of y'all ain't nobody pastor to be trying to rebuke nobody. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Some of y'all get a little authority. You just be trying to go off on everybody because you ain't never had no power in your life. Ain't never had no authority. Ain't never did. <laughs> Just about like most police officers. Most police officers got picked on. They got picked on in their yeah. life. That's why they be so nasty and talk down to people. Yeah. They be, <laughs> hey, get over here. Shut up. Be quiet while I'm talking. Oh, no, man, who you talking to? But at most times they get picked on, so they get in a position of authority to, to get back at people. And so some of y'all that in these leadership roles, make sure you treat people nice because it helps with the vision. Amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. All right, I'm, I'm almost closing here. All right, now... Go to uh, Exodus 35 and, and, and 4. Look at somebody and say, we got to contribute to the vision. And Moses spake unto all the con congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord, Whosoever is of, of a willing heart, let him bring it an offering of the Lord, gold and silver and brass, and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linens and goat's hair, <clears throat> the ram's skin, skins dyed red, and badger's skin, and shit on wood, and oil for the light, and spices for anointing oil, and for sweet incense, and onyx stones, and stones to be set for the ephod, and for the breastplate. And every wise hearted among you shall come and make all that the Lord hath commanded. The tabernacle, his tent, and his covering, his tachets, and his boards, his bars, his pillars, and his sockets, the ark and the staves thereof, with the mercy seat and the veil of the covering. The table and his staves and all his vessels. All right, jump down to the 20th verse. I'm going to expedite time here. And all the congregation of the children of Israel departed from the presence of Moses, and they came, everyone whose heart stirred him up, and everyone whom his spirit made willing, willing, and they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation, and for all his service and for, for the holy garments. So, so they were stirred up. They were stirred up, and they started bringing things. Everybody had a willing heart to bring things for what Moses saw. Moses had a vision of the tabernacle. Moses had a vision of what it should be, and the people came together and brought and contributed whatever the vision was because they wanted to be a part of it. Somebody shout hallelujah. All right, last scripture, Exodus 36. And one, uh-huh. Then wrought Bezaliel and Aholiab, and every wise-hearted man in whom the Lord put wisdom and understanding to know how to work all manner of work, for the service of the sanctuary. Work, work. So they had all manner, uh, they had the wisdom and understanding to know how to work. How do you know how to work in the ministry if you don't know what we're working towards? So when you find out what we're working towards, then you can go ahead and say, okay, I got my hammer, I got my nail, I have this, I have that, so I can be a part of that. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are y'all excited for the vision? All right, we have a question. Do the ATM have part in the vision? Of course, of course. Amen. They, they have a, uh, uh, ATM should have a, a vision, and it should be, you know, parallel to what, what my vision is. So we need to see growth in that ATM department. At one point in time, ATM packed up one side of the church. They, they can't, y'all got to get back on it. So if y'all, you know, but y'all got to be a part of it, and don't let the fire die out. Don't let it dwindle down. When all that stuff that y'all was doing, bringing so many people to the church, doing this, doing that, don't let that stuff die. Amen. Amen. We got to hold on to the vision. And we need everybody to partake. Can't just have some people, just can't have the ministers. Can't just have the ministers' wives. But everybody got to be on fire for what the vision is saying. Amen. 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 You know, I'm going to say this. 
When I played sports, we had something called a playbook. And what the playbook was, was objectives and different things to do to get to the one goal, which was winning the game. So I've given you the vision. We done talked about the playbook, different things. Now it's in your hand. Let me tell you something. If you got a basketball team out there, right, you have, all right, these are all the positions I'm closing. You got the one, the two, the three, the four, and the five. The one is the point guard, two, shooting guard, three, the small forward, four, power forward, and then the five is the center. All of these have the same goal in mind, to win the game. But they have different roles, and they have to come together to make sure that the vision of winning is going to come to pass. And if everybody here, you know, you might not be the point guard. Point guard, bring the ball down. You know, if you a center and you ain't got no dribble, you ain't got no business being a point guard. Right? Amen. So, this is our vision, everybody. I want y'all to be serious about this. I want, and I know we got quite a few people that's not here tonight, but we want to make sure that every, that's, what, that's all we need to be talking about is vision, 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 vision. What am I going to do to help the vision? What am I going to do to perfect the vision? What am I going to do to move the vision? Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, everyone standing. If you believe that the vision will come to pass, Let's rejoice like it's already here. Hallelujah. 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 I think if we, if, if we could just do this and have the same mind, if we be on the same, I mean, same mind, and one thing I realize is that we can crank it up. We have a hard time finishing. We have a hard time with consistency. We'll start doing it for a while, and then we'll start fading out. Another thing that's important, your attendance is important. Your attendance is very, 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 very important. Stop letting every little small thing keep you from coming to church. Amen. Amen. Stop, stop letting little small stuff keep you from coming to church or this person ain't looking at me. If somebody at your job looking at you funny, you still clocking in the next day. Yes, somebody got an attitude that with you on your job, you going right back to the next day. Somebody in your class at school got an attitude with you, you going to sit right back in that classroom. When it comes down to the church, somebody look at you funny, you oh, I, I can't do it no more. can't do it. And you know what the problem is? I'm closing. I'm going to say this. What the problem is is that you don't see the ministry and the church as a family. I, 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 I can't even count the many times me and my brother fought. We fought in the house, fought all the time. As soon as we got done fighting, we were right back in the game, in the room playing the game, fighting. Amen. Because in a house, you're going to have issues with your brother. That's why the Bible says, if your brother tras trespass against you, your brother can trespass against you. We're talking about a sinner, we're talking about people in the church. And sometimes when we have that in the church, we don't look at the church as a family, and we look at it like we, you know, I, I can't see what you look at it like, because if you're at work, you know, you can go back to work, but, you know, when you're home, you got to come back home too. Amen. So we got to be able to look at this thing in a different light and see that, you know, this vision is not just from pastor, but this vision is from God. And we got to take it as if it's a prophecy. Stop taking it as if I'm just talking out of my head or just saying it. I, this thing got to come to pass. Amen. Go just hug a few people and say, it got to come to pass. And say, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to play a part. <laughs> 